hello lulu are you there hello yes yeah. yes i have joined right. okay so i think we can begin yes we can begin yes can can, can we can we uh, begin yes yes we can begin okay. so a uh, very good afternoon everyone good afternoon uh, we are here on the second day of uh, the lecture on funny boy by sham salvadurai and our speaker dr lulu moriam borgohai is with us uh, to uh, to continue the lecture uh, for the same so welcome uh, dr lulu and uh, uh, i think we can straight away move on to the lecture yes good afternoon all of you i'm really sorry about the delay i had to uh, switch um, connections because the earlier connection was not working uh, hope all okay. of you are, we are on time uh, yeah hope all of you are doing well um, uh, yesterday can you just give me one minute just just one minute yes sure sure yes. take your time yeah Hello. Yes, Hello. Lulu. Can I can yes. you please rotate rotate the camera? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's better now, I suppose. Yes. It's okay now. All right. So, um, thank you for joining, all of you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mona Lisa, Ba, of course. So, I I think we we uh, we were going through these um, different threads of discussion, and uh, we were also talking about the different chapters. Pigs can't fly, and Radha Auntie, and see no evil, hear no evil, and small choices. And today we shall uh, at length speak about at length, or uh, not not quite that much of a length, but we shall speak about the best school of all. Now, if you remember, um, uh, R. G.'s father, he was uh, he had a lot of insecurities. He thought that he was scared that his son may, might turn out gay, and uh, of course which was not acceptable to the 1970 1980 colombo society because um, as he tells arji's mother nalini that no oh, my son might well be compared by another gay boy ratneshwar raktaneshwar okay so and he might become the talk of the town so uh, what arji's father does is he sends him to another school Uh, Queen Victoria Academy, and uh, with the sole intention of trying to straighten him. I hope you understand. Trying to, you know, uh, 
people still believe that transgender does not exist people still believe that this is just a tendency which can be corrected okay and the moment you say correct it implies that uh, it is uh, you know not normative okay it is uh, to be uh, to be gay or to be a lesbian is not normal normative all right and his father was forcing him to become a heteronormative right whether he is a homosexual or not that was beyond the question but then his father was almost coercing him to become a heteronormative and uh, father thought probably the best idea would be to send him to the school where his elder brother diggy went victoria queen victoria academy now as i had told you yesterday victoria academy is a microcosm of the intense uh, political strife that was visible in uh, that the uh, colombo at that time all right it was a microcosm a smaller model of whatever was happening in sri lanka so we shall see what happens is in short i would just want to tell you um that uh, you know there was a struggle for power the principal black tai he was um, you know pro tamil okay he wanted a more inclusive kind of um, student community in his class but then his uh, immediate uh, junior that is the vice principal he was you know only for the sinhalis but uh, black tai had a very overbearing kind of attitude he was um, rough he was um, you know he was an old school teacher he <clears throat> believed in caning students he believed in beating students and therefore he was exceptionally unpopular on the other hand the vice principal okay the vice principal was popular popular in the sense he knew okay um, this is uh, mr lokubandara he knew how to win the public vote though he was actually you know anti tamil nobody actually could make out his intentions so anyway uh, we are talking about this and uh, uh, you know rg has a central role to play here if we if we look at the text as a text of bildungsroman do you know what is uh, bildungsroman Milling's roman is uh, the psychological growth, basically, of the protagonist. So, uh, by the time it is this uh, this particular chapter that we are talking about, the best school of all, R. G. has uh, developed, matured to a great degree, and the the very uh, title of the uh, lesson, uh, the the story, this story within the novel, best school of all, is actually the title of a poem. that black tie wanted rg to recite best school of all okay you you there is no time to recite the poem but then it is the title of that poem and uh the uh, principal's intention black tie's black tie is the principal so pr the principal's intention was to you know win some kind of favor in his own name as i had already told you yesterday that as the guest of honor there would be one of the cabinet ministers coming to that school who was the alumni of that school a past pupil of that school so black tie uh, thought that i will make rg recite a couple of poems and based on those poems i'll you know go about my campaign speech all right campaign speech in the sense he wishes to uh, keep the na name of the school queen victoria intact all right he wanted to have a more inclusive community of students tamil sinhalis buddhist catholic everybody all right so he 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 wanted this although his intentions were good he was unpopular i had said and what he does was uh when rg was unable rg rg was chosen to recite the poem because rg was a very good reciter but rg how, however was you know he was not convinced by the poem because the poem was all full praise of school 
which is not actually true. Okay, because that particular school, Victoria Academy, as he comes and sees it, it was a place where hooligans move around. You know, the um, Sinhalis, Dadas, Gundas, they moved around in gangs. They, uh, you know, ill-treated the Tamils almost to the point of sexual harassment. Okay, boys and boys. So, and uh, you also have this place where... Uh, this uh, this particular um, the cricket team the cricket team was a ground for contention of power and anybody actually who could you know um, win his way to the uh, head prefect or to the you know to the to whoever had controlled the uh, cricketing team whoever could win his way only that person only that student became part of the famous 11 right so he understood that whatever was written in the poem was all untrue but still he tried to memorize the lines when he could not memorize he was taken to the principal's office and black tie would always take a cane with him you know black tie's intention was always good he thought that caning this child would get out the best of him but then even as RG remembers the entire poem fully well, the moment he sees the cane, RG forgets, right? So he was punished much like uh, this other boy, uh, what's his name? Soja. Now, as I had told you, Soja Shehan, or you, whether you call him Soja and Shehan was his um, uh, pet name. So Soja... Uh, for Soja, Arji had developed a different kind of liking, okay, a kind of admiration, which is homosocial, emotional, but also a homosexual kind of admiration, right? So when Soja, when he saw Soja being punished for hours and hours, right, just because Soja had long hair and he, uh, you know, just because he had long hair and, and it was against school ethics, therefore Soja had to be outside the principal's office every day for hours and hours and hours. So RG actually had an intention in mind. Okay, now RG does something that uh, was unexpected of him, but then that was his way of, uh, no. You, when, when he does that, you almost see him as a post-colonial subject who is uh, taking power to his own hands at this moment of time. So, so what he does is, you know, he feels that uh, the, the set of poems, both on the school and on the cricket team, were actually a, a kind of um, enforced false consciousness. Because um, the, the school was extremely praised in the first poem. And cricketing team was also you know, highly elated in the second poem. But RG sees that in reality, these things do not operate. So he is uh, absolutely disillusioned by everything. Therefore, he finds it very hard to memorize. When do you find something hard to memorize? When you are not convinced by the truth of it. Okay, and therefore he finds it even harder to recite. Now, what happens is uh, on, on a particular day, they have that celebration and uh, Black Tie was supposed to make his campaign speech based on RG's recitation of the poem. So, like for instance, RG might have said that this school is great and then Black Tie would continue his speech based on RG's recitation that as RG recites in his poem, and therefore I say this, 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 you know, Black Tie would have based his entire campaign speech on RG's recitation. But then RG does something, right? What RG does is, you know, on that particular day, when RG's name was called to recite the poem in front of, a, you know, a hall full of audience, where his parents were there, where Soja, Okay, the boy he admired and with whom he by now already had a sexual relationship. Okay, once or twice he, he had this sexual relationship. So, uh, what does Soja say? Soja 
you know, Soja was looking from the balcony trying to encourage RG and his parents, RG's parents were there and everybody was expecting that RG would give a wonderful rendition. But then RG goes there and he very, very skillfully mixes the lines in the poems in a way that it is not actually praising the school, but then uh, depreciating it. Okay, so he does that and quietly comes back. Now, the principal was to follow RG and begin his speech. So, the, so definitely the principal was all flabbergasted. He was shocked at what RG had done. Now, why do you think RG had done this? The, the, the reason that he had, uh, you know, consciously jumble the lines the reason that he had consciously you know spoken the first line instead of the third line or maybe the fifth line instead of the second line right you know this was uh, when soja asked him soja was also shocked okay that uh, boy soja was also shocked when so when soja asked him what did you do rj why did you do this because rj you know the these poems full well and you have done it very very consciously why did you do it so we, we shall come to RJ's answer sometime later. Now the principal is uh, fully shocked, but then he has to go and speak and he says that uh, RJ is an example of the future of Colombo, the ills and burdens of Colombo who cannot be corrected despite anything. All right, so, but then RJ did not mind, right? He, he, of course, he could not face his parents, but he did not mind doing this because, um, now he had taken the power to himself, right? He, everything has changed by now. And the principal, therefore, after that, because the principal had already written his speech, uh, do you remember um, this this um, film, Amir Khan and uh, what was that film? That popular film? Somebody please help me. Uh, what was that? That popular film? Those two, yes, three idiots. Three. Okay, three idiots. You 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 know about that speech that uh, you know distorted speech that one of the characters he speaks. So the principal has that kind of a ludicrous situation because his entire he had prepared the speech already, basing his entire speech on RG's um, you know eulogy praise of the poem. So it's like the principal says. Uh, as RG praises the poem, as the, as RG praises the school on this, 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 and therefore I say that, that, that. So it becomes comical and the entire audience laughs. Okay, so this is the outcome. And when Soja later asks him, RG, why did you do it? Now, this was actually RG's uh, way of resisting any kind of hegemony hegemony in the sense he was trying to resist any kind of power that has been imposed upon him you know the canings the canings were uh, not helpful okay and he thought that th this kind of an old school technique will definitely not work plus he was also hurt by the fact that his beloved soja was affected or punished for so simple a thing Okay, and um, this this particular man, black tie, he 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 was all, also very very, um, you know, over cautious. If students blinked too much, or maybe if they um, lip licked their lips, all these petty things were punishable according to black tie. So you know, these were unnecessary things, right? And even as um, the principal was for the Tamils. Uh, RG thought that this kind of a school will not work in the future. Okay. So, um, after all these chapters, we actually come to, after all these stories about RG's. Um, uh, which is almost uh, his, from his childhood up to his present uh, circumstance, we, we come to the, the sixth uh, 
I, I cannot call it a story because it is written in the form of a journal, an epilogue, riot journal. Okay. Now, you know, this is the ultimate, the culmination of all um, evil that any kind of ethnic or ethno-political violence that Sri Lanka has to offer. I had told you yesterday that in Sri Lanka, the Sinhalese were a minority. Okay, whether you are a Sinhalese, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry. The Sinhalese were a majority, but the Tamil was a minority. Whether you are a Tamil uh, Buddhist, okay, or a Tamil, uh, no, of course, there were no Tamil Buddhists, I'm sorry. Whether you are a Tamil Christian or a very few portion of Tamil uh, Hindu, Okay, basically Tamil Christians, Catholics, they were a minority and it was uh, whatever you see in this riot journal was tantamount to a genocide. You know, what is a genocide? If you know about the Jewish context, all right, you know, this anti-Semitic feeling or here genocide would mean, you know, trying to annihilate trying to destroy and kill an entire community of people. So this was exactly what was happening to the Tamils in the 1983 Black July riots. Okay, this is historically true. Black July riots, 1983. So uh, and I repeat the word genocide, which would be very important for you. And uh, uh, now this... Um, this uh, what what Arjay's family and particularly his father realizes that you know his father was uh, very hardworking. He worked as a banker and now he worked. You know he he had a big resort of his own. Uh, he worked with a Sinhalese friend. The Sinhalese friend was of course very good to him. And uh, now uh, Arjay's father was very very uh, he, you know. Even as a minority in a country, you, you might be a minority in a country, but then after all, this is your country. And you have so much of faith in your country. So Arjay's father was ready to be submissive, number one. Okay. He, he, you know, he almost uh, uh, internalized the anti-Tamil regulations of the constitution of Sri Lanka at that time. Okay. He was submissive to that. Number two. He worked with a lot of diligence, thinking that hard work will give me labor. Number three, he compromised and he conformed to the rules. Okay, so he was satisfied with whatever minimal protection uh, Sri Lanka had to offer to the Tamils. But all of these was shattered. In that very, uh, you know, gruesome uh, anti-Tamil violence, uh, you, you you would just see how this uh, why is this called a journal because all the incidents here are related in terms of days okay 6 p.m for example 3 p.m and then again uh, you you would have july 27th july 28th how things went on july 29th august 2nd august 25, so it becomes a direct journal rather than a story. Now, why do you think um, um, the, the narrator has taken up or the author has taken up this journalistic mode? You understand journal, journalistic, because it is a direct reporting of events. You know, it is almost like saying that there is no fictiveness about it. You understand fiction. Fiction is, art is artificial, right? Fiction is fictive but here journal almost makes us believe that probably this is the truth and probably this is the truth right it's not probably this is actually the truth so rg's grandparents remember in the very first chapter we talked about apache and amachi while they were uh, no okay the first thing that happens is rg's um, entire house is burned down by the Sinhalese rioters. L luckily for them, they had, um, you know, Sinhalese uh, people in the neighborhood and they went and hid there. Okay, it's not that everybody, every each Sinhalese is a rioter. Okay, so all these people in the neighborhood were Sinhalese. They, they hid this 
Tamil family and they were saved only because the because of these Sinhalese neighbors. Whereas on the other hand, these Sinhalese rioters came then burned down their entire house and as many Tamil families that were there. So this was all, of course, a repercussion of um, 13 Sinhalese policemen who were killed by the LTTE in Jaffna. Remember I told you about LTTE yesterday? All right, these were, this is a terrorist group, was a terrorist group. And um, ultimately, again, because of this, you know, violence begetting violence. And uh, of course, his uh, house was burned down. And because uh, they were all burned down, remember uh, RG's father worked uh, in this hotel business with Sena, uncle and Chitra auntie. These were Sinhalese people. They were, of course, good. They took them away to their own house and hid, hid them at their own house. Of course, they had disturbances. But then um, that is another thing. So, you know, this... Um, and then uh, when uh, uh, RG's grandparents, Apache and Amachi, had come to visit them in Chitra auntie and Sena uncle's house, and as they returned, Amachi and Apache, these old people, their car was also burned down and they died to it. Okay, they succumbed to it, they died. So, you know, this is a kind of epiphanic uh, moment of realization. Epiphany, you understand? It's a, a, a kind of, uh, you know, elevated kind of realization, awakening, understanding to RG's father that finally we are not safe in this country. In our own motherland, we are not safe, right? So uh, it's like a litany of loss. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, now, for RG, this entire episode, the violence, the killing, the murder, the loot, because once he goes back to his house one day after the burning down, he, he sees that most of it had been burned and whatever was there had been looted away. So all of these had come as a kind of, you know, a very powerful metaphor of education in racial politics. You know, if, uh, if you were aware of, okay, I'll, I'll come back to Black Lives Matter, probably you had been seeing Black Lives Matter a lot of, um, uh, about uh, one month back, a lot of revolt in America. We, 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 we tend to think that, you know, racism is a white disease. But then what about these? The Sinhalese again, Tamils, Tamils again, Sinhalese, right? So racism is not just been white. It is there everywhere. You, you know, racism, casteism, you know, communalism, how it is so evident even in our country. So, so and, and finally, you know, the, the novel ends with, uh, with the decision that Arjis family will go over to Canada to stay with one of their uncles as, uh, you know, under the American Refugee Act. And if you go as a refugee, uh, you are not allowed to carry much of your money or any of your assets. So naturally this comes as a disaster and they begin to think that shall we become beggars in Canada? Because they cannot, they did have, of course, gathered a lot of wealth here, but they cannot take it to Canada. So a refugee is a refugee, and uh, they they would be staying with one of their uncles, which is also something that they did not like because they would be dependent on them, and it would, nobody actually wants to be dependent. Uh, and uh, finally, this is how the novel ends, and with the ending of the novel. Two things, um, uh, two things actually evolve. All right, two things or come to a stop. One is, as you as you can understand, what is the scope of uh, this um, this boy RG's homosexual inclinations? Okay, what will he do? What will happen to him? Because he has to leave Soja behind, despite the fact that they, uh, Soja was his first lover. He had to leave him behind, and also. Uh, because it is a moment of a national crisis, RG has to compromise everything and he has to join his family for the purpose of survival. 
Now, why I'm saying he has to join his family? When do you join something? When you are separate from somebody. See, the first time that uh, actually RG and uh, Soja does come together, physically together, okay, they are almost in an act of making love in the garage of RG's house when Soja was invited for lunch. So, are you there? I'm just seeing names. <laughs> yes. Okay. All the students, one of you please respond. Are you there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Kashyapi says yes. Bonani is about to say yes, probably. Anyway, beautiful names, all of you. Um, <clears throat> okay, Garima Dutta says yes. That's nice. <laughs> All right, such beautiful names. Anyway, um, Kakoli says yes. Rutuja says yes. All right, all right. Thank you so much for being there, for being patient. <laughs> now, uh, yes, I was talking about RG joining his family. Now, you join a family when you think you have become separated from them. So it's like when RG makes his, uh, you know, first uh, sexual encounter with this boy Soja. Okay, at that moment, of course, he was gratified and satisfied. But then after after he comes back, he hates himself. He hates Soja. He hates his entire body because he had given it away to somebody. Right. But later, when he realizes that Soja actually is the son of a divorced mother who has gone over to England and his father stays out of the country most of the time. So Soja is only left to the mercy of a old caretaker woman who is very, very critical about him. And therefore, Soja is basically familyless. So RG understands all of this and he thinks what is actually wrong in being a homosexual. And who, you know, who gives anybody the, 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 the right to judge whether somebody is correct or not? So these arbiters of, you know, truth, arbiters of justice, people who claim to say that this is right and this is wrong, who are they after all? They are also human beings. So he begins to, even at this early age, he's um, a late teen now, 18-year-old, even at this, even as an 18-year-old, he begins to question uh, and frame and be critical about all of these uh, heteronormative, you know, being uh, within the uh, norm, be being traditional, all these values. Okay, so um, uh, this is one side of it. And um, uh, do you have questions right now? Any kind of questions? You still do not have questions. Participants, please respond. Maybe I'll, I'll just check YouTube.
we'll wait for her to rejoin. Maybe there's some problem on her end. Hello. Yes, you are on no. now. Okay. Yeah. I, I left the meeting and joined again. Now, certain themes prop up in the structure of the novel, and I was trying to uh, jot them down. And uh, and uh, le let's see if you. And uh, and of course, when you when you shall be talking about this novel, when you shall be analyzing or reading or writing or appreciating this novel writing about or appreciating this novel, there would be certain themes, certain words that would prop up. Okay. Now, um, again, certain themes, right? For example, the first theme, you, you can you can jot it down if you think it's uh, important and helpful. The Aniket Arora has a message. Just tell me if you can hear me or not. Just write, type, type it if you can hear me. Hello? Aniket Arora has a message. Hello? Can you hear me or anybody please answer? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay. We okay. can hear you. Yeah. Right. So, um, the first is the domestic heroine. You all must have read in your high school or maybe middle school, you all must definitely have read Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. So uh, as, as an adolescent boy, R.G. was also very, very uh, uh, keen on reading this book, Little Women, and he wanted to read its sequels. And do you remember Daryl Uncle, the person, uh, the burger man with whom his mother had an affair and who was actually his mother's and auntie's childhood friends, a friend. Okay, so uh, Daryl Uncle had arranged for all the sequels to Little Women for this particular boy, R.G. Now, why I'm saying the domestic heroine, okay? Here we are uh, not very sure about, initially we are not very, of course we are sure, but then we are, we are not very sure about R.G.'s alignments. Okay, uh, we, we see him more as a homosexual. And because he has inclinations towards the feminine, the feminized, we are sorry that the English grammar, all right, or, or for that matter, any grammar does not have the uh, pronoun for the third gender. It's either she or him. And therefore, we are uh, forced to use um, this, this particular term, heroine with RG, the domestic, you know, the image of the domestic heroine see you will not answer when you have to answer you will not write that she's a heroine she, rg will be a man he will be a protagonist but then the idea that he uh, gives the metaphor is that of a domestic heroine the domesticated heroine if you remember rg was very fond of the bright bright game he arranged the uh, yeah, you know he was very creative. He arranged the elaborate wedding ceremony to play with his cousins, the sari, the dress, everything. Okay, and then later also he wanted that uh, his auntie, Radha auntie, should marry the man she likes rather than a Tamil man. But then this does not work out. And of course he sees how his father also had a relationship with her, with an English woman. So what I'm trying to point out is as you read the novel, you immediately become an ally of R.G., the narrator. And you, you almost want whatever he wants. Okay, This is uh, typical of any narratorial case. But you, you almost want that uh, Radha should have married Anil. Or maybe his mother should have uh, married Daryl in her early uh, life, earlier life. So you have this uh, almost domesticated heroine to be present in R.G.'s character. Uh, but then, of course, there is another upcoming uh, you know, theme with this, which is the theme of the star-crossed love plot. And I had just told you how these lovers never met in R.G.'s 
world though he wanted desperately wanted the fairy tale ending nothing of that sort actually happened all the marriages were basically loveless so uh, another thing that props up is the training of the reader's sympathy from lesser to greater shock now if you uh, remember just just a second if you remember uh, initially arji wanted to play the bride bride game and how his own cousin tanuja as well his, his father had uh, tried to force him to take part in the cricket game and how he was punished by his grandmother and because he was punished he was scared that he might um, you know get a very bad thrashing and therefore he runs to the beach he crosses the road crosses the rail line line and he runs to the beach on the opposite side you know sri lanka is surrounded by water so he crosses uh, he he goes to the beach and this going to the beach you know he is there all by himself there is this large you know scorching sun atop his head it's very cruel okay and he is all alone in that beach that that on the, at that particular time the color of the water and the color of the beach was also alien and different to him so this was actually the beginning of his estrangement it is a troop of loss it is a troop of exile okay something that will happen to him in later life because uh, sexually also he will be alienated because he is he does not uh, belong to the hetero heteronormative category sexually alienated as well as later the entire family as they go to uh, go to canada as a refugee family they are political exiles you, you understand exile lord ram was in exile okay so uh, you know what happens is from small shocks okay from small shock for rg that bright 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 game might have been a very childish longing but then it was a small shock and then how radha uh, her his aunt changes her mind because she was attacked by sinhali's man in the train and she uh, you know in a way she changes her mind she understands that this is not the reality of sri lanka therefore she um, you can say almost ditches her sinhali's lover anil anil of course was a very uh, good young man and uh, this was done and then suddenly that uh, deril uncle's murder okay which is also another case of racism deril uncle's murder all of these and then finally their loss of home and with that their loss of the homeland it is not just their home that has been burned their you know their entire psychology has been singed singed burned it was not just they had to uh, you know they had no scope to rebuild their home because now they cannot be cannot remain in their homeland so you know the reader is trained to um uh to you know to lesser shocks okay a terrain of lesser shocks and going over to greater shocks right now there is another thing that comes up very pertin pertinently is the concept of neo liberalism okay we had talked about uh, domestic heroine we had talked about star cross love plot we had talked about the training of the reader sympathy from lesser to greater shock and now what is this neo liberalism now if you remember uh, yesterday i think i had spoken about it rg was um, uh, rg and all his cousins they were fascinated to see tanuja tanuja tanuja's beautiful doll now uh, tanuja had recently returned from canada and a thing as a doll was something almost unseen in rg's childhood because of the kind of um, you know economic stringent me measures that the government of sri lanka had on the economy of the country they were not allowed to buy international goods but by the time rg grows up to be an adolescent you see how he 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 is exposed to the cornell tea shop he is exposed to supermarkets in the style of um, america right 
he is exposed to how his family uh, goes to all these places like you know yesterday i was telling you about this um, cornell supermarket and oberoi supper club and intercontinental coffee shop now all of these were american style supermarkets you you understand what is this what i'm trying to say american style supermarket or you know in our places uh, suddenly we had this on rush of uh, the chain of shoham um, uh, markets coming up or maybe uh, interior wise vishal came up or maybe um, mcdonalds okay so all of all of these things or maybe pizza huts and all of these are actually can can you can you please say what is this this is a this is an example of neo liberalism the new economic policy okay it's a kind of free economy which was allowed and you know boundaries were now crossed over so uh, other other goods from other countries could freely move over to sri lanka now i uh, now neo liberalism okay liberal economy free economy anybody sri lanka now becomes a market to the international goods and trades now this neo liberalism actually is an epiphany you can say another word or a metaphor for neo colonialism you can say why you can of course understand if i give you one example because any good that you just check anything that you almost anything okay not everything of course but almost anything that you check you just look at the label it's made in china all right so this is a new kind of you know made in china this is a new kind of colonialism and imperialism where the colonizing country does not have to come and kill you but then they are ruling the market economy so this was beginning to happen in sri lanka america was at that time you know selling all its goods to sri lanka and most of the asian countries so neo liberalism slash neo colonial neo -col n e o okay neo colonialism right you understand now uh, another thing that uh, another theme that we we can read into the text is the the question of uh, racism the question of uh, ethnic violence and very uh, nicely implicated with this is neo liberalism again because you know uh, if you if you you know when um, this man he uh, shyam selvadurai in 1996 he had <coughs> broadcasted this interview the cbc had uh, taken the canada broadcasting corporation had taken this interview where he says that i could not put it into rg's mouth because rg was still a small boy in my novel but then of course uh, we we could see that in the in the name of economy the poor were always deprived in the name of new economy you know this happens in any capitalist country in the name of uh, new economy the poor and particularly the minority class the tamil uh, you know the tamil uh, people or maybe very few burghar people or maybe a very small muslim community all of them of course are uh, tamils right so uh, they were made scapegoats okay they had to probably pay a lot of tax or they, they were targeted also through the economy so economy becomes another measure of suppressing the minority right now again when you talk about violence you know the killing of this burghar man derry lankal you know i told you what is a uh, burghar b u r g h e r a uh, british or dutch or a white man marrying a sri lankan woman and all of the children actually stayed back in sri lanka and then they procreated and they remarried they married within the community of sri lanka but they were a cut above the others because of their white skin yet there was no sense of inclusiveness they were a minority in that place and therefore you know the sudden uh, death of derry lankal as he goes as a journalist to make investigations about jaffna and uh, when nalini arjee's mother she was very insistent upon you know trying to find out who had committed this murder people you know she was looked upon very suspiciously and 
in fact her own sister and some of her friends advised her that this is not something good that you are doing now because you are also a minority and you know it's like bringing danger upon yourself if you try to uh, speak for or you try to file a case for this burger man deril uncle so again we we definitely know about the tamil sinhalese ethnic violence another thing that props up is the bildungsroman novel which you cannot deny you might also have it as an undergraduate question the bildungsroman b i l d u n g s r o m a n what is bildungsroman i had told you some a um, few mo moments back bildungsroman is the growth of the character you know how rg grows rg as you find he's a very imaginative boy right and uh, you know step wise very uh, you know with with shocks and with examples and with experiences he realizes a lot of things in life and he grows he matures this is a novel on his maturity also now so a billings roman novel and then uh, the concept of struggle for power okay now again i begin with that bright bright game because pigs can fly is the seminal um, uh, story which sets the tone of the entire novel it, it has all the um, themes in fact all the troops that are entwined together now when you say struggle for power right uh, do you remember if if you remember it's very hard for you i understand those of you who have not read the text so this um, entire case of you know power I, I said, the male cousins in those spend the days Sundays. The male cousins they occupied the front garden, the front field, the front yard. Okay, the forefront because they were male. Of course, there was a girl with them, Mina, girl cousin, and uh, all these girls they occupied the backyard. So, power. You understand? Patriarchy associated with power. right and then how this canadian cousin who returns tanuja her fatness okay she was fat and they call her boo boo fatty fatty boo boo all right these names and her fatness uh, in the first uh, two spend the day she remains very quiet but then she evolves she finally comes up okay she has come from canada and she claims her position as the new bride so again a power structure right you know but then rg always had this sense of rebel in him even as tanuja comes and claims her position as a bride and rg is given the you know position of a groom and in a uh, tamil marriage or sri lankan marriage a groom did not have much of a uh, much of work to do he was the most useless man he just sat right so what rg does is He, he he found this entire groom episode very very dull when he was forced to become the groom so what he does is he says i am the man i am the groom and therefore i go to office okay so in that particular bride bride dream as tanuja and uh, the other girls were prepare, preparing for the marriage uh, this man this uh, rg he says because i i am the groom he sets up an office there and you know he keeps on banging his table calling for his girl cousins making them page boys so you know he kind of subverts this power so the power again comes back from tanuja to him all right he tries to uh, regain his situation so these girls are also interested in this new um, broom uh, uh, you know uh, in this uh, very imaginative very creative uh, uh, structuring of a groom where now the groom suddenly becomes important in the bride bride dream okay so he he so power and then uh, you look at there is murder and nobody dares to investigate it right and again if you're talking about power um, in the in the game of cricket in the spend the days in the game of cricket there were one set of cousins on this side and one set of cousins on the other side and how they insinuated into their positions okay those who were powerful will become the forefront batsmen no matter whether you are efficient in the game or not a similar uh, figure happens in 
Victoria Academy, where all the boys who are more powerful, who are more influential, and most importantly, who are Sinhalese, actually can play in the forefront or can make it to the, you know, uh, schools 11. Right. So how power operates in different levels? If you, you, you can, uh, of course, write a paper on this or maybe an assignment on this. And uh, you can also, if you can, bring in Foucault. So uh, all these things happen. And then finally, we see, we understand uh, how RG had taken over the power of black tie upon himself by subverting the poem that he was asked to recite. You know, nobody suspected that he would do it. And he went to the stage, you know, position of power. His, he held the mic. Nobody could pull him out from there. And as a child, nobody can question him. Because as a child, it was um, most expected that he might make mistakes. Right. So he tried to uh, take back power, subvert power, what Black Tie had snatched away from him. So these are some themes that uh, surface. You can, of course, think of many other things. RG is a very thoughtful uh, critique. Okay, he does not like the poems. He, he thinks these poems are doggerels. You know, doggerel is just nonsense rhyming. Uh, he becomes a very um, critical post-colonial subject. Right. So <coughs> this is basically it. I hope you have uh, understood and responses, please. Uh, would you like to uh, reply uh, to Aniket's query? Aniket, good afternoon, ma'am. While explaining the text, you use the term homosexual and transgender, but they two are very different identities. Hmm. My question is that is transsexual or transgender references a funny? Yeah, your question, your question, of course, no. See, I use the term trans, I did not use the term transgender as transgender. Aniket, can you hear me? Aniket, please respond. Can you, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Somebody respond, please. Aniket, yes, can you hear Aniket, me? you can unmute. You can unmute and respond to ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I can hear you. So, yes, okay. I'll, I'll just check your question once again. Mm. Homosexual, of course, as you understand. Uh, in love with somebody of the same gender. You know, transgender, of course, it's a... Uh, it's not a very different identity, but then what I was trying to say is at that moment of time, he was, um, you know, when did I use the word transgender? Remember when I said that he wanted to wear that sari because he tried to transcend his gender. Okay. I wasn't trying to say that he's a transgender. Please, uh, I, I'm not trying to say that. Okay. See, this is again an example of uh, the norm, the normative. I was not trying to tap it as tap him as a transgender that he has, you know, uh, biologically transcended his gender or surgically transcended his gender. What I was trying to say is he was going beyond gender roles. OK, he as a boy should have um, uh, most uh, normatively, most normally he should have become the groom or he should have worn a shirt and tie or for that matter, he should have played cricket. But then he likes to, you know, he likes to play the bride bride game and he wants to be the bride because when he becomes the bride, he uh, trans he, he feels, feels himself transcended into an independent free self. OK, so in that case, in that way, transcending the gender, I, I'm not using it as a term per se, but transcending his uh, you know, society pressed gender. All right. The transcending his socially constructed gender. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Are you sure it's clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Lulu, I just yes. want uh, you to uh, comment uh, on the epilogue. Okay. I mean, how okay. how how does it function in the context of the novel, and how is it related to Arjee's, you know, mm. his uh, self awareness? Uh, can you just uh, comment on that? The riot journal. Yeah. The riot journal. Um, see, you are a lot more learned learned than me, so I get nervous now. But as far on, as I've understood it. it and uh, as you know this is my first foray into indian writing uh, you know he explains that i did not have the he this is what um, uh, salvadurai says in a later interview he says that i did not have the time and the energy and the creativity to you know make a story out of what was actually happening to me so maybe maybe uh, because it is written in the form of a journal he tries us to he tries us to convince okay he he wants us to uh, you know um, be part of his interpretive labor he he wants us to feel that uh, this entire thing is very very emergent and it is very very uh, urgent and i cannot be fictive in something which was happening to me it is of course it is almost like a journal of loss it is a litany of loss and it is because of this journal he has lost his homeland he has lost everything he has lost his lover he this is only about losses so maybe uh, i'm not very sure i think uh, this could be one way of seeing it but of course we have uh, uh, what do you say Yes, I agree to that. I was, uh, I mean, you mentioned it in your uh, lecture, uh, yeah. the loss of the homeland, the loss yes. of the home. So uh, the epilogue is, yes, I agree, agree to you. But uh, how how can we uh, relate it to Arjee's, you know, his uh, self-awareness? Mm, his self-awareness of his homosexuality? Yeah, his homosexuality. Uh, since that is one of the pertinent themes you know of the novel yes. so how can how can we relate it to that okay mm, probably you know uh, because it is in the format of a journal uh, he, he of course he does not have the time to entangle himself with his lover and uh, because he is uh, in most likelihood he is not talking about his uh, homosexual urgings anywhere here he he just mentions once that one happy relief was you know there were many guests who had visited them at sen uncle's house when their house when their own house was burned so he says that one just one happy uh, guest was when soja came his lover so um so now now what happens is when soja comes i think that is the time when he realizes that uh, even uh, you know even his mother comes to accept seven months that they had known him even his mother comes to accept soja as uh, his friend arjee's friend so you know i think there is a mixing up of homosexuality as a, as well as homosexuality it is not just sexual attraction between the two but then they have come to depend upon each other emotionally as well and the very fact that he is relieved when he sees soja you know we can understand his um, psychological uh, dependence on soja but ultimately what happens is he has to realize that he has to leave his lover because he now has to come back to his family for the question of survival so awareness in the sense that of course my lover is there i have you know i have come to realize that no matter what no matter whatever the society says i find some kind of um, uh, you know repose in connecting with this boy so i think he has almost um, he has fully developed himself and seen himself as a 
gay homosexual men and mm-hmm. even now if if you think that uh, this is some kind of an autobiography even now uh, salvador i actually is uh, married to a man so this first lover uh, whether you call it homosexual or homosexual is uh, another step towards his uh, you know awakenings his awareness of his inclination and mm-hmm. he was comfortable with it now he has come to terms with it earlier he uh, the first time that they met physically he was you know ashamed he thought that i had become separate from my family but now he begins to question heteronormativity who is it that makes a girl or what is it that makes a girl a girl or boy or boy or why is it that only girls and boys should love and uh, you know fall in love and marry so he begins to question heteronormativity normativity and he uh, i think uh, chooses and is comfortable with his gayness mm-hmm. so uh, i think uh, the sense of self awareness more in the sense of homo social than homosexual uh yes you can say mm-hmm. both homo social as well as homosexual mm-hmm. but of course also homo sociality and he becomes comfortable with his self mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think so yeah. with his awareness because uh, just uh, the first time he meets him and the lunch after that he hated um, after that physical intimacy he hated uh, in moments after that he hated himself he hated soja they did mm-hmm. not talk to each other he pushed him away but later he realizes that i have also come to emotionally depend on this man homo social mm-hmm. so uh, i think um, that could be one kind of a reading mm-hmm. yes participants you have any comments to me could you understand <laughs> please respond participants please respond to ma'am hello could you understand okay john michael says yes <laughs> he has a question is the patriarchy a burden for homosexuals if not then what are the burdens what are the burdens is a very open question but patriarchy yes it's a burden not just for the homosexuals it for it's a burden for the man himself it's a burden for the woman okay Yes, we have one more question from Kashyapi. Okay, where is the question? In the chat uh, box, yeah. Yeah, she says, can we possibly say that Arjee's school had sexualized seemingly mundane acts? Mundane act in a sense? Arjee's which school are you talking about? Of course, you must be talking about Queen Victoria. You are not talking about St. Gabriel, right? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, as you mentioned in your lecture, that uh, black tie, uh, black tie was a uh, very. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. See, he was very critical about long hair and yes, all those yes, things. Yes, yes, ma'am. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, maybe you could have used another. Okay, I understand. Mandine. Oh. Uh, they have considered uh, long hair and you know blinking of eyes and uh, you know licking of lips to be uh, not normal okay they it did not fit into the strict old school structure of black tie so one example could be you know you see uh, this particular boy soja soja is um uh you know he is uh, so ruthlessly uh, punished by black tie not just because of those long hair clips but because everybody knows that soja was having this homosexual affair in fact a physical affair with the head prefect of the school so 
you know, he could easily go about doing this. But then again, uh, rather than bringing this out, everybody thought it to be, uh, black guy in fact, thought it to be proper not to, you know, proper. Proper again is a very uh, political word. Everybody thought it to be uh, correct to, black guy thought it to punish him in some other, uh, uh, through some other excuse. Of course, long hair was not allowed. You know, sexualizing, uh, uh, yes, probably to an extent. If you if you can say blinking of eyes or licking of lips, these are sexual acts also. So they, they may not, be, they, they might be, you know, just very innocent acts. Somebody may not think about it that deep and school boys will not be, you know, you know, and, and it's a school where you only had boys. So, of course, they were not trying to seduce anybody. I mean, not everybody is a homosexual. So, yes, uh, in that sense, yes, it was old school and, uh, you know, it was very proper. It thought that you should uh, stick to the norm. Am I been able to answer you, Kashyapi? Yes, ma'am. Okay. But once you, once this lockdown and this uh, whatever gets away, but funny book is a very um, unavailable book, as I got to know it. It's hard to get. I did. I got it from a colleague because I was to sit for this session. So maybe you'll have to order it online, or maybe you'll have to read it online, if if uh, these um, you know online uh, delivery services are still blocked. Or you can order in bulk because you have the text. No, in Amazon you get it. Yes, any more queries, participants? If not, then we can end the session for today with your due permission, Lulu. Yes, why permission? <laughs> No, of course. Tomorrow because I intend to come speaker. up. Uh, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I intend to come up with Po, and I'm also slightly excited about it because I'm slightly more confident in American. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Most most of you must have read the Pauline letter. We usually read it in school. It's an interesting read, and you can read it in different levels. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Lulu. Thank you for being with us. And that was uh, such a wonderful session, actually. And it was very interesting as well. <laughs> I don't know. Because we know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you'll be here with us for two more days. Tomorrow yes. with a new topic. Uh, uh, the Parlon Letter by Edgar Allan Poe. So hope to see you tomorrow again. And participants, please be with us. And I shall uh, share the meeting details in a short while from now. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, so, thank you much so much for the opportunity and uh, thank you participants. <laughs> thank you and bye-bye. Bye-bye.